Welcome to Dr. Jürgen Günther Rare Books. My name is Dr. Erin Donovan, and today I get to show you something really out of the ordinary. This book was made in central Mexico and is dated to 1571. It's called the San Salvador Huejo Cinco Pleitos. The word pleitos means lawsuit, and that's exactly what this represents. It's the written testimonial of a lawsuit written in colonial Spanish from the 16th century. And it is signed by many of the local officials in the area of San Salvador, Mexico, which is in central Mexico. Huejotzinco is within this region of San Salvador. Um, and this work includes not only the colonial um, write-up of the lawsuit inside, but also includes six drawings done in the hand of the indigenous local people of this area, written in pictographic Nahuatl language. Something uh, like this, this kind of book, um, is not on the market. This is the only example. Uh, this is one of six which are known in the world, and um, the other five are all in world institutions. So this is something for a very special collector or um, a wonderful library with a good collection on Central American um, or Latin American works. The story of this book is really fascinating and it tells us quite a lot about the tensions that erupt between um, the Spanish colonial rulers and the local people in Central America. What we learn when we read this book is that there was a local vicar who was meant to take care of the people in the area of Huejotzinco and um, this vicar was in fact charging the local people for services he was meant to provide for free for example marriages burials baptisms even blankets um, he was asking them to work for example to build the local chapel to make furniture for him to paint paintings for the church um, and then was not paying them for their labor uh, and he was also asking um, supplies from them, for example, food, rope, things like that, that they were making and producing them, um, them themselves, and he was not paying for those supplies. This uh, became known by um, the local uh, clerics in the diocese, and this lawsuit was brought to defend the interests of the local people. And what's the, the very, very fascinating um, Nahuatl drawings represent the first-hand account from the indigenous people of this area about what was stolen from them. Let's have um, a more detailed look. So, let's have a look at the first of these um, Nahuatl pictographic drawings. Uh, this represents an actual accounting of the goods um, and services that were not paid um, by the vicar. And so what we see here is this symbol represents the little village where the people were. And here is the year 1570. Here's the year 1571. And then here we have this figure of a man, which we see repeated here. Uh, this represents labor. So we have here all of these symbols, and that represents numbers. So this is the amount of labor that was not paid for uh, in the year 1570, and here is the amount of labor not paid for in the year 1571. The same kind of accounting happens underneath for eggs. You see this form here that represents eggs. Um, and for example, these bushels here represent the number 400. So this is 400 eggs, 400 eggs, 400 eggs, and so on. Um, and then here, these circles represent tortillas. So this is the amount of tortillas that were not paid for. This drawing actually goes on to the back. So even more accounting happening. And then we see um, 
a very similar type of system for the next village. So the second drawing shows us the same kind of thing, but for the very next village, also for the years 1570 and 1571. We can see it's very clearly drawn um, and that the numerical system comes from things that were um, recognizable to the people. So the circles, the little circles, actually would represent amount of value of a tortilla. Um, and then when we move along, so these two drawings were written on European paper um, of a larger format than the rest of the document. And then um, here we see actually native bark paper. So it is a little heavier and has a very different texture. And what we see here are all of these little heads representing different local artisans who were working for the vicar. And so these were carpenters um, and they were building furniture and also working on the local church. And so we see the um, figures that represent them with their uh, given Christian names written above, not their names at birth, but their Christian names for um, the clerics. And then we have here um, the value of their work represented in these circles, giving a number. And then down below, we have these picture frames, which represented artworks that were created. Um, and so we have here six different artworks that were created um, and were not paid for. And so this um, leaf shows two frames much more elaborately drawn and the names of two artists down below. Um, I believe this is Marcos de Muelas and this is Joaquin Guterres. Um, and so these are two artisans who we believe um, are the likely candidates to have actually drawn these um, six Nahuatl pictogram uh, leaves. We have here a value of evaluation of their work um, on those two pieces. Here we have another artwork that is represented and these represent measurements. So the sizes of the different artworks and again, evaluation here. And then the final drawing um, is quite interesting as well um, based on the architectural history of the area. This shows the church that the local um, artisans built and it also includes um, a sort of map of the church with the names of each uh, internal chapel. And then here we see um, actual measurements to give a sense of the sizes um, for the different artworks that were made and put into these chapels. Um, this is actually the earliest rendering um, and the earliest mention of this particular church, which is known then from later documents while it was already built in an active um, use. So this book really speaks to us from a different place and a different time and um, it's, it's showing us um, about the consequences of the European colonial empire um, in which the indigenous people ended up being abused by those who were meant to care um, for them. So um, this is something that we hope goes to an excellent home where it can be um, enjoyed and perhaps put amongst other works of art from Central America or Latin America.